Hello and welcome to X-Plane 11 and Dreamfoil's uh, Bell 407. So uh, I have updated, uh, it's an updated version now, there's some fixes around for it. So it's updated to version 1.01 and uh, mostly has to do with handling and stuff. So let's take this bird for a little flight. Let's remove all the stuff on it. I made my own little, uh, added my own, what do you call them, registration of course, to it. Uh, this is a real helicopter, Sierra Echo Juliet Echo X-ray. So let's go in here. So it's started up. First we'll remove the brakes, then we'll Turn everything on, battery on, the single slides, hydraulics, few boosters, silence to that. We went through all the data procedures. Good. Okay, so we're ready to start. moving stone is cut out um, I think it's cool that you actually I really keep and this is just brilliant this helicopter it makes it hard going back to other helicopters actually. Put some heat on because it's a cold morning here in Stockholm. Video heat. Reset generators. Generators on. Okay, so can increase. RPM Get our headphones on um, So one of the things I would change uh, which I actually which should work on this version is the forced the forced trim section so you have in the real helicopter it's this button but in the sim you have to set it up to you have to set it up to be on um, just let get that to get some flashlights flash blinking lights uh, you have to set up some button on your uh, um, your control so I use uh, the brake button or one of the main buttons on the control um, I'm going to show you the, how it works but first we have to take off This, I think it's a little bit easier with stability in this version compared to the other one. I'm not, I'm still a really hard helicopter to fly though. So we'll take off and we'll go towards Stockholm, I think. This is Stockholm, King Sagan Furlunda Airport, which is just out, really close where I live. 10 minute drive from where I live. It's an ultralight airport. So, and the exit point for the airport is just, just ahead, ahead of here, called Beacon. So, if I re release the control, it, it sort of bobs up. So, using force trim, you set it where you want it. Like so, and you press hold your button you assigned, and then you release it. You center it and release it. So 
force on it, so it makes hand flying a lot easier. This is Kung Singen, by the way. Not where I live, uh, the main village, or whatever you want to call it, uh, or my, the county I live in. So we go. Uh, we won't go towards Stockholm, we'll go from Stockholm. Using the force trim is simply a matter of putting it in, in the angle of the ta or tack that you want to. Because if I want to keep it straight 11 here, let's see. So, I press the button, center the joystick, and release it. It's very simple when you get the handling right. And it makes hand flying so much easier. Suddenly I realize how they actually fly these things in reality. It's like because doing it by hand otherwise would be a pain. That's Lilkran, I think it is. No, that's behind us, Lilkran. Uh. So over here is where I live, Boo. I know that because it's out, it's out here in the field because here is a depot for uh, the local ro rail system. So you can see the rails here and there's a depot. And here is, it doesn't look like this in reality because there's no houses here. Live down. Let's see, find it. I live down on this street. It's called Pelagonvägen. It's around there somewhere. Doesn't, the house doesn't look as well like those, though. It's like one big house here and there. There actually is one big house, but it's not there. It's more like here somewhere. behind us somewhere, just underneath us. So and I work over here in this town called the Bolsta. I turn this on, sorry. Did I turn no oh, got the avionics. Sorry. Now it's on. So this is a massive, I mean using the force trim button or system on the aircraft makes it completely hand flyable. Turn events on. So, force trim the necessity and makes this helicopter just brilliant to fly. Here's the road I drive to work every day. This small road here. find where I actually work. I, the house is not, shouldn't be there. But where 
this road somewhere here. Should be a roundabout here. Uh, yes, a roundabout. Drew, drive through this every morning. This industrial area called Gogget here. And there's another roundabout there. Yeah, check. And then there should be. See where's. Yes, around about, and then there should be one around here. So, but here, here is my there is where I work. The bus station here. Here is where I work. It doesn't look exactly like that. Uh, it's pretty close. Central Bolster. So, and I head on back. This is just a short flight to show you. Show you. There's some other updates. If you look at the official thread on explain.org for the, with the, where the developer keeps close eye on bug reports and stuff um, you can find some good information there so I need to watch my altitude so you see we need to go to an island which is located right ahead of here a bit away Which is the entry point for for entry way back to uh, to Ferland Airfield? So let's just keep this all nice and tidy. The force trim is really amazing you could force turn it I guess into turn and you can just keep the turn we try that I'm gonna do a left turn just keep the altitude oh okay it didn't work out too well <laughs> maybe don't I don't maybe that's over course over course, maybe that's uh, a bit hard to do. So I will we'll just try and get this to fly the way I want it. And you could, I mean, you have to hook a button so disconnect it. So if I disconnect it, it's for streaming, you see, suddenly it goes like, well, I want to fly up there. So. Then you just sort of wiggle it back to where you want it, just to keep the altitude. Center, that's it. You can hook up, um, so you can, if you look at this little thing there, you can actually, in real aircraft, you can flip that sides and stuff. And you Changed uh, you change it in a small like instead of always using a force trim button and releasing it, you can just use that hat switch to get get it all set up the way you want. It. So, and I set that up to work in this aircraft too, on in the sim too. So. I can just if it, something is drawing a bit to the let's see no, now it's steady. Let's see if you fly straight and level like so, and I want it to go down, you can just flip it once and it will stay go up. So you can do that. It's not perfect, but it works really good compared to, to hand flying. So. 
don't know why it's quite slow speed rate. Maybe like almost 75 percent torque, and we're still not in the 120s. Wonder why. So let's see. We'll go down to 700 feet. She's our pattern altitude at Verlanda. This is school gun, which is the entry point, one of the entry and exit points. The other one was the bridge, uh, the big gun, where we left. And here's where we enter. Seven hundred feet. Just go straight in and land. See if we can find find our airport is off here to the left. Right, so. So it's a right hand pattern for runway 16, so we'll just come in and land like that. So we'll disconnect for stream. Start slowing down. See the runway here? The runway? Only 16 goes across there. So, and as soon as you introduce torque, when you get closer to the ground, you will start yawing to the right, so just going. So constant struggles, well actually, yes, I think it's a struggle. Constant struggle between how you use the pedals and torques to increase torque. You, uh, if I increase torque now, it will yaw to the left, to the right, sorry. So you have to compensate with the left uh, anti torque pedal input. So the flying helicopter is not very easy. I thought it was hard, of course, but this is. In reality, it's really actually more hard. Let's see if we can land here. Should be able to land here if I just take it slow. Slowly, slowly. On the side. Good. Um, so we'll power it down. We can turn off G pass and avionics and heater. Silence the horn. Thank you for the tip, by the way. I. Uh, uh, can't remember what, who gave me the tip. It was in the comment section of one of the videos. And I, I, I'm sorry for not remembering the name, but thank you. Very greatly appreciated. So, we're here. We managed to land on the place. The little spot we wanted to land on. So, we put that there. Open the door. I, I haven't read any around, anywhere around about the cooling down period, but I think there's a cooling down period for like a minute. It, at least there was some the official documents I read for the TH-57, which is the uh, jet range of military version. So I think that's pretty much done. So we'll turn off the engine. We got a horn. So we'll watch this, and when it's under 40, rotor is under 40, we can engage the rotor brake. Break. It's under 40. Engage 
shoulder break. I assume that's good. So we'll turn everything off. Lights, hydraulics, generator, flight instruments, booster pumps, pitot heat, and the battery. So we can strap the helicopter down again. So nice short flight around Stockholm just to show you how much easier it is with the force trim. So set up the force trim. Seriously. That will help you so much. And that's it. Nice flight around the Stockholm area. So I hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something and if you have it, if you have it you go fly it, it's amazing. So thank you for watching, if you like this channel please subscribe, if you like this episode please hit the like button, leave a comment or share. So see you soon, take care, bye bye.